Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's five o'clock. It's watch, time for Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Larry Parks. We are so appreciative. Uh, we say thank you to the Public Theater and thank you to HowlRound because uh, they provide the way for the portal so that we can get together um, on Monday afternoons and talk about your work and your creative process. We've been doing this show for like 15 years. I tell people about it, they're like, Jesus, good Lord, oh my God. Um, I'm like, yeah, we sure have. Um, and uh, it's just so joyful. Um, last week particularly was really beautiful. So we thank you guys. So um, we know how to do this. I'm sorry, I'm looking for my, my, my timer, which is over here. Excuse me one sec. Here it is. This is what we do. Uh, we're gonna set a timer for 20 minutes and then we're gonna talk with you about your work and your creative process. And if you should have a question about your work or your creative process, Lolly is gonna tell you how to get in touch. Go Lolly. That's right. If you have a question, um, if you're in Zoom with us, you can ask questions by clicking on the raise your hand button, which should be in the participants tab, likely on the bottom of your screen. If you have any trouble finding the raise your hand button, you can just send me a private message in the chat and I will do my best to help you. If you're watching with us on the HowlRound live stream, feel free to send us your questions via the public theater's Twitter or Instagram accounts or via Watch Me Works Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H O W L R O U N D. Fantastic. I always want to say R O U N D, but that's, <laughs> that's somebody else's melody. Um, okay, so we've got our 20 minutes. You ready? And here we go.
Hey. All righty, righty, righty. Here we are. We're back. Thanks, Lolly. Um, so now we take that was the work portion of our program. We're gonna take uh, some questions if anybody has any or answers. Or just we want to look at each other's backgrounds. Ooh, yeah, I love looking at what you have. Hey, here's a question. Hey, Matthew. Hey, good afternoon. Happy to start everything off here. Yeah. Um, I am uh, continuing to work on that artwork, looking at the uh, people in the future. Yeah. Um, and because uh, I'd like to do this without having any dialogue being spoken by people, uh, I realize I'm, I'm really living in a world of gestures and starting to get really up to speed with how to speak through gestures um and running into um just a lot of questions about how culturally specific some gestures are and how to try and speak fluently in a way that's accessible to an audience even with gestures that don't exist in in our time that are invented but in a way that are able to reach others um Again, knowing that uh, there may be some cultural leanings with some people, so they wouldn't understand, and other people would. How do I how do I navigate um, that whole path? Oh my goodness! Oh, now so I remember. Now, can, correct me if I'm wrong. Please correct me. I thought you had a, a a series of poems, many, many, many that you're doing on a video. You and you're and you're working with video, but so nothing spoken. Nothing. You don't want to have anybody actually say anything. Right. There's there's the poetry. Oh, and I actually you. locked that. I just got back from vacation and I, I got, yeah, thank you. I'm very excited about that. Um, but one of the poems called Miraculous inspired an artwork, um, which is going to have three video panels, uh, oh. which which will look like you're looking through a window. Everything yeah. should be hopefully life size. And, and they're basically on the other side of the window in the future. We, the viewers, are here in the present um and there are there are other elements to it but ultimately it's these people in the future who get a chance to uh have the window to the past right and they will be to whatever degree they're trying to communicate through gestures um and again i think that my understanding is that that some gestures are very culturally or regionally specific so it could be something where people would be making a gesture and then half the people who might see this artwork would have no idea what that means and the other half would go oh my gosh that's that's perfect and i know you've done work where you you've uh used gestures without any dialogue is is there any way of moving through this yeah that's a great question matthew i it's tricky i think you actually depending on what you want them to be communicating you might have some actors improv and try it out and i mean is it are you going to film what they do is it going to be captured yes. or is it yes yeah it'll be filmed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you might want to you might want to um have actors try it out and see what resonates with people um and you don't want it spoken but is there any sort of you know how you go to a a museum and it has you know there's a beautiful painting or whatever and then it has a little card next to it to sort of give you some information on it would that be interesting at all to you sort of to supplement what is not being said to sort of um, give the viewer a kind of context right there's actually a whole different context okay. um there are every seven to nine seconds going to be um different lines coming up uh, which are explaining something happening at this time. It, it's basically uh, at this time, a human being is, and you pick your thing and people all over the world. Um, and then th that will change the future because of course, everything that we do, when you think about the fact that your great, 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 great grandparents had to have things go exactly right. And then everybody passed that down to us for us to get here um so ultimately everything everybody does affects everybody to follow and 
Um, so that those action steps of the present will be happening um, concurrently with this stuff that's happening in the future, which from time to time will change because of some of these things that are happening now. Uh -huh. So okay. there's there's that play against it, but um, you know, in terms of what the gestures mean, um, I, I, I'm uh, looking at a diverse cast who will bring in their own uh, language of gestures. Uh, I'm assuming, but uh, in order to just broaden the palette, um, I mean, I I got a little dictionary of body language. Oh, great! Uh, just to get me started, but. Right. Um, but I'm not somebody who's familiar with working in the theater. Um, and and um, I've worked with actors in conjunction with my, my work, but it's not in, in quite the creative way uh -huh, that, uh -huh, uh -huh, that we're uh -huh. talking about now. Yeah, and you're right, Matthew, that cult, it's culturally specific. Some people, um, in, and, and it's, I mean, it, it varies from really person to person because you can have two people from, you could say the same culture, and somebody might speak a lot with their hand and somebody from the same culture might not speak at all with their body at all um, because that's more about maybe the way they were raised. So I would say maybe, you know, let the actors do their thing um, and, and uh, it's funny, I'm gonna say, you know, if there's there's no way to really communicate what specifically that they're saying so i would just let the act give the actors room to just act with their bodies but not to um i don't say worry about it too much that's weird but mm -hmm. but i i i think you the more important it is for you to have the audience understand what specifically they're saying then you you might augment the gestures with some language if you really find it oh man nobody gets this then you're gonna have to make a choice you know what i'm saying um because if you if you're a lighting designer say working in a theater and you have a great idea for a lighting cue it's fantastic and you can't see the actors when you do the lighting cue as a lighting designer you can say okay Lauren, if i want the audience to see the actors i'm gonna have to modify my idea a little bit so that my work can be appreciated in the way I wanted to be appreciated. Um, so you, you might see what happens, you know? Would it help to give them ideas of things to try and communicate? Sure, 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 definitely. You can give them prompts and sure. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. definitely. And, and, and work with them collaboratively to see what, what you guys start developing, you know? So awesome. like, again, great project, man. Really great. cool project. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Looks like we have Lou up next. Hey, Lou, how you doing? How's your project? How is your project? Last you were giving it to the publisher, were you? How's it going? So I was giving it to my agent. Oh, you can hear me, okay? Yes. Yeah. And it's still evolving. It's still going. Uh -huh. It's still going. I'm still working all the time, um, trying to separate the, like you talk about the marketplace versus mm -hmm. the, the art of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I spoke to her again today. She still wants to work with me, so I think it's going well. <laughs> you know, we'll see. Fantastic. She's still, you know, she's still invested. I'm invested. So thanks um, for asking. So great. Yeah. Really great. I feel the best about it than I felt in the four years I've been working on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to try to ride that as long as possible. And I think I only feel as good about it today because of how much work I do on it. Like I used to see the work and it not being in the light of day as like a failure, like that, you know, it only still lived in my computer or something, but I can see from where I'm sitting now that the work is making it better and richer. And it actually might be a gift that nobody's wanted to run it yet because I think I'm only getting better and I only understand more what I want to do. So some of that's about being here with you and everybody and working. Mm -hmm. So thank you so for that. Um, my, my question is related to my project, um, which, Inside of my project, I talk a lot about my career in advertising and um, some of the difficulties that I faced and um, being a person who couldn't be featured in the advertising, but making it <laughs> and that yeah. disconnect yeah. between having a body and a physical form that's not aspirational, but manufacturing aspiration for people. And part of the journey of the story is about um, it's about me being in these spaces for literal decades. Like I worked in media for literal decades. And so my question is, 
well, maybe it's another statement before the question. I've been thinking a lot about, oh shit, I'm writing this story that's sort of like searingly kind of judgmental of these spaces, but I was still there the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I realized that myself as a character might seem like not believable or something, like, like that, this idea of like me as a character in these spaces saying these things about the things I saw, but like where I am now, I'm evolved to a point where I understand my relationship was toxic, but like while I'm inside of it, I went there willingly. Mm -hmm. I went there every day on purpose. Mm -hmm. I did things. So I guess what I, maybe my question is about like fallibility as a character, or Mm -hmm. my question is about flawed decision-making as a character. Mm -hmm. And I think it's particularly difficult because the character is me, like the narrator Mm -hmm. of this Mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. But I guess I wanted to ask you about people who make bad decisions and like Mm -hmm. how to write them with heart or how to maybe, and I think I want to ask a question that there's no answer to, which is I kind of want to absolve myself from judgment from the reader for like yeah. making yeah. decisions where I put myself in these, these environments. And now I'm talking poorly about them. And I, I would think if I were to read that, I might be like, well, what the fuck are you doing there for 15 years? Yeah. So this is like a little bit, again, I don't know the answer, but I just kind of want to talk about like when people make bad decisions in art, like what, mm-hmm or decisions that maybe don't serve them. Like, what is that dynamic like? And how do you have grace for them when you're you're Mm -hmm. creating them? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's a great question, Lou. I mean, you know, for me, it's like, anybody who has lived, really lived, should have compassion. (laughs) If If you're really here, you know what I mean? If you're mm-hmm. really here, you know how difficult it is. You know, um, if you're phoning it in, and you're or, or you're someone with massive amounts of privilege who, unlike the Buddha, never left his parents' house, you know, to go and see what the world was really like, or even whatever you think of Jesus, you know, he left his dad's house or his parents' house too. I'm going to see what the world is like. Yo, oh, it's rough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you really live, then you, you would have compassion for people. So we might read your book or other books where, or, or other, we hear about people who stumble. And sure, we, we say, you know, we want, the, we want them to get up and we want them to be perfect, but we know how difficult it is to really live in the world. Um, and I think that it sounds like what you're, you're writing is showing is how you, yeah, you went to work every day with intention and on purpose. And that was the best you could do at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. And now you're somewhere else, you know, working to make better choices. You know, and if we want to like dish you for that or whatever, yeah, you know, then, then, then we've never, we've never done anything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything about, you know, and then that's, you know, so, it, but it's, in, it's interesting. It, hopefully it'll call forth compassion in the reader. Mm. We've all that's been the there. Yeah. We've all been there. And it's on, it's really honest too, to say like, I've made mistakes. I'm not perfect. I've mm. had a hard time, you know? I, there was that, that, those, that week when I didn't know all the answers for <laughs> that month or that year. Or decade or, or, dec- two. <laughs> or, or, or decade or, or two. Yeah. And I thought, well, because, because there's all sorts of reasons why we're involved in, you know, relationships, systems, you know, we, we, sometimes we try to change things from the inside. Sometimes we figure that this is the best we can do for ourselves. Sometimes mm-hmm. there are all kinds of reasons why we're in situations that aren't, and I, I, I think the people who stand outside of systems and situations and just are always giving it a thumbs down or cancel this person, cancel that person. I, I feel like, whoa, you know, mm. put some years on your back. I really see how hard it is, you know. Um, people who think that, you know, if you're going to play in the entertainment business, you always should be the one to stand up and say things and call people out and this and that. I'm like, oh, go into a meeting. 
see how hard that is, you know? And then you'll, then you'll know that it's a lot harder to actually be in those rooms and you're, you can't always be heroic. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes you just have to get through the day. So. Mm, that's really helpful. Yeah. A lot of the story is well, not, a, a big theme in the story is how I thought I could change things from the inside and then sure. learned that that was sure. Ooh, a misguided. Yeah. You can't change mm-hmm. the master's house. You can't dismantle mm. the master's house or the master's tools. Sure. Sure. Mm. But but so many of us try. I mean, we're in the world trying to make the world a better place. Well, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's beautiful though. And I, but that's and that's I'm, I'm that that can be a part of the book that is amplified, you know, I, I think. The the narrator if they're you, you know, you can you can amplify that. You can come up against that kind of often touched upon situation which is which is 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 very beautiful thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thanks great question i'm glad it's i'm glad you're proud of your work because you have done the work you've really been working hard and i like your nail polish it's really pretty (laughs) what color is it like black or dark red or what Sorry, it's a, like a wine color. A wine. You know? Oh, yeah. Thank you nice. so much. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> I love it too. Very cute. Um, <laughs> uh, Sujin Lee looks like they have a question. I'm asking you to unmute. Hey, Sujin. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, um, Susan Laurie. Uh, I um, have a question about um, I'm at this place where I've written a bunch and it's been sitting in the drawer or in the files, if you will, for a while. And um, I'm about to apply as a cohort to this uh, DC thing called the Welders. I don't know if anyone in New York has heard of it or maybe you're all over, Um, but it's been around, I don't know, about three iterations, about nine years now. And then they're doing the next generation. So every three years, people apply to help self-produce. And I have to go through all my play babies and figure out which one do I want to open up again. And in fact, when I look at plays, I kind of see them as lovers, honestly, because you get really intimate with the worlds. And I feel like, who do I want to sleep with again? And, you know, it's like really hard to figure that out. (laughs) Or maybe I need to sleep with somebody new. It's time to, you know, get back on the apps or whatever. So I'm, I'm in this quandary and there are a couple of new ideas I'm excited about. I haven't really fleshed it out. I've been, it's been like lurking in my imagination for several years. And then of course, there's like my MFA thesis play that, um, you know, I haven't really uh, gone back to. And I don't know if I was ready to write it. Like, I think it was like 15 years ago, I wrote it. And I probably, I was, I was probably too, close to things that happened and I wrote it too early and it was a little traumatic to write. And so now that I have, like you mentioned, life experience, right? A little bit of life experience. um, I think I have a better vantage point to write so that all the characters mm, are more three-dimensional and it's not like there's only one bad person, right? Mm -hmm. Uh There's all the characters have different shades in them, right? Right. So um, I'm, I'm wondering when you have to pick either a play child or a play lover to see again, how do you choose? Do you go through and read everything? I mean, that, that'll take a while. Like, do you read every word and be like, oh, I'm still turned on by this or I'm completely turned off? Um, what is your process and, and um, how has that been for you? And it's something that I could always switch up. Like we have to do applications now but maybe in a couple of months, I might not be in love with what I proposed. And so when no one's going to be like, well, you, you know, this and that. So. Right. All right. That's great. Great question. Great question. So um, do you have to do the application now. Yes. So like August, now, like what? Yeah. What August 15th is the deadline. Great. So you've got like a month and you have to hand, you have to send them a manuscript. 
No, you don't. It's, it's, uh, you know, you're just proposing that I could always say I have, you know, the fifth iteration of the, you know, play or what have you, I can count back, but you don't need to turn in something. You just have to basically explain it in a paragraph, like a quick little synopsis. Okay. And then you say something about yourself as well. Yes. Kind of like, why do I want to apply to be a welder? It's okay. I can be out of the closet about it. And I think other people, (laughs) you know, uh, whoever's applying. That's great. No. And, and how many do they take? Um, this year they're only taking one group. So it has to be like six or seven, um, folks, because we are going to be the, you know, the uh, theater company, kind of like a pop-up theater company for three years, if you will. Right. So, yes. So you're going to get in, right? I hope so. But the thing is we need to propose like six new works. It's not just like, Ooh, we're just going to pick one, but we're hoping that each person in our group they'll obviously have something that they've been dreaming of or, you know, right. wanting to work on with us. And so it's, it's probably six artists with six new plays and hopefully. So you go we'll in be- as a group, you go in as a, yes. as a, as a, as a cohort. Okay. You did say that. Great. Okay. Okay. So I would say, which, and I'd say since reading, rereading the plays would take too long. Okay. So how about writing all the plays on a, uh, separate index cards you know what i mean mm-hmm. each each play has an index card right okay and then you lay them all out on a table and you which one is most like me you know what i mean which one feels like me the most the most or which three feel most like me which are interesting which one feels like me right um that's, I'm not saying which one is mo- the most personal or tells the most, you know, you know, autobiographical. I'm not saying that. Which one really shows myself, however you want to define that, right? That's the one I would go with the most. Which one I'm most excited about? And I listened when you were talking about your, your former uh, MFA thesis, you were talking about it more than the other ones. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm talking about dating, you know, you're talking about that person more, uh, you know, and this person, you know, and I, I feel like I'm older now and I could go back to that and I could make something of it. That's exciting to, to me. You know, there shows that there's some interest there. Um, but I, but I, do, I don't know. I don't know about your other projects so much. So which one gets you the, which one is most exciting to you? Because if you get in or you don't, that's the one you should work on anyway. That's the one that you should carry across the finish line, right? Does that, does that, does that, does that yes, help? No, that, that's super helpful. I, I love this index card writing thing. That's yeah. not hard. Right, <laughs> right. Writing right. Drafts. We gotta make it easy. right. Yeah. We got to make it easy. It's got to be fun. Okay. You write the titles on some index cards. You know what I mean? You like walk around with them. You can sit in a coffee shop and go, yes, you know, or write and maybe, uh, the title on the front, flip it over, right? Why you love it. I love it because it's crazy. I love it because there are a hundred characters. I love it because there are 12 songs and an acrobat. I don't know what, you know, what, what you got, but you just kind of, why you love it, why you love it so much. Or I love it because it's the first play I wrote. Or I love it because it's the most recent play. I love it because, you know, and, and when you get to the p- plays, right, I think this one is cool because people will think it's cool. Eh, maybe not so much. You know, maybe not so much. The ones that you really think are exciting to you, then you then it's a win-win, right? Okay, <laughs> all right, that's great. Um, I uh, I will do the index thing and I'll just carry it around. And yeah, you know, when I wake up, I wonder which one I'll grab. It's like oh, I gotta there look at go. this, or you know, that kind there of thing. Go. So um, thank you so much. That's 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 really helpful, yeah, and yeah. also. Uh, lovely space. I didn't know this was going on for, did you say 15 years? No, 12 or something 12? like that. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. Well, the pandemic, the lockdown made all the years do weird stuff. So yes, <laughs> right. the lockdown has brought us together in this, in this Zoom community in this, because okay. before that we were just in the lobby of the public theater. It was, you know, Milani can tell she used to call in every week. Oh, <laughs> it, was, it was kind of rough. <laughs> it was rough. Lynn was there. Yeah. Rebecca was there. We were like hanging out in the lobby. Anyway, but this is much, Thank this you. is nice. Look, I'm just sitting in my living room. Tra-la-la. No, I love it. And I love your guitars. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you.
Good luck with it and check back in and tell us how you're doing. Melania? Yes. Hi, Hi Melania. Yeah. Hi. 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 I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I remember those times. I, I, right? I remember trying to make my question as a tweet because I tweet my question and they were so long. So I said, I need to. Uh, it was wonderful. It was it was yeah, yeah. It was but great. I love this space. Yeah. And yes. And I have this question that I am I I love our group. Um I am listening a lot about enthusiasm. There is mm -hmm. something about what we love, what we like, and, and trying to do that, going to, to the things that give us this right. you know, this joy. Right. What is happening to me is that long ago before doing this presentation that I gave my, my work, you remember the novel that I could finish and I, I show up there and I did it. There was a, a play that the person that is a family member from Argentina, she's uh -huh. an artist and she asked me about a play because she knows that they write. And I said, yes. And we began the process. Um, it was fine. She was very happy. Everybody that read that and I don't know what happened to me. I, I, I told you about this long ago. So they didn't, because they said, I would love to have a play written by you. And I say, yes. Right. I began the process. They read something. Then this other opportunity came. I stopped that. And now that process was wonderful at the beginning. And then I got stuck. I couldn't go further and this other thing appeared. So I left that the, the first project. And now what is happening to me is that the idea of coming back to that work doesn't give me a lot of enthusiasm. It's more that I want to do it, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I am scared because I am stuck or it's like maybe not something that I should do right now. I don't know how to discern what to do with the project because I gave my word. I say yes. I said right. yes. And I, I I like to keep my my word. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. because I, I try to mm -hmm. I say yes mm -hmm. to, right. to follow. Right. So right. I don't know what is happening to me. Is that and I, I am I noticed that I am thinking about it and it comes when when I for example I am listening to all of you and I am learning a lot and I could feel that that like came comes to me. Uh -huh. All the time. Uh -huh. At the same time, I would love to write more for children. It's something that I there mm -hmm. is a, a desire there. So I don't know exactly what how to, to proceed for, to the future. Is mm -hmm. should I try this play and try to finish something at least a, a first draft so I can give it to this person that I love and I mm -hmm. promise the work? Mm -hmm. Or say no. And saying no makes me feel weird, but at the same mm -hmm. time, trying to do the work, I know it's going to be tough because mm -hmm. I don't know how to go on. It was a wonderful beginning and then something happened and I don't know what, what it was. So um, I would like to know what are your thoughts about when, when something doesn't give you enthusiasm, but at the same time, you feel that it would be good to do it because I would, right. I would like to finish that. Right, 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 right. And that's a great question, Milana. Your questions are always so good. So let's say enthusiasm, closeness to the spirit, right? I think mm. that's right, right? Okay, so yes. enthusiasm, it, 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 it's, it's, let's just say, we already talk, started talking about dating. It's like love, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and Sujin got us talking about dating and dating, it's like love. So some days, you feel a certain kind of love. Uh, you feel love for your partner, but it's gonna, maybe you're kind of annoyed at them because they <laughs> didn't clean out the bathtub or whatever, I don't know. But, you know <laughs> so it's like, I love you, <laughs> you know, like that. And sometimes it's love because they cook your favorite dinner or something like that, mm -hmm. but it's all love, right? Mm -hmm. So this enthusiasm, why don't we say it manifests itself in different ways? Sometimes it's like, oh, goody, I get to work on the project. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I really see myself as writing that kind of thing. And sometimes it's like, 
I really got to finish this. Maybe that's a form of enthusiasm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now it's much easier to go, hooray, I'm going to, yeah, I'm excited, you know, right? And that excitement, enthusiasm, that kind of enthusiasm. Um, this, this sort of quiet, the enthusiasm of responsibility, the, 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 the quiet mm -hmm. call, they're like, the work is calling to you from behind a, 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 a thick <laughs> block, which could, if you see it in the right way, become a stepping stone. So, so how do we answer the call of enthusiasm when it is, it looks like it's being obscured by difficulty, right? Difficult yeah. circumstance. We, and it's great. We find a way to work, right? So maybe if we work for, I don't know, could you, could you spend, I don't know, 15 minutes a day with it? You know, is that, is that a possible? What I mean by 15 minutes a day, like you set your timer for 15 minutes and you pick a time, you know, maybe, I don't know, first thing in the morning or whatever, whenever, right? Before you launch into your bigger project, and you spend 15 minutes just, I don't know, right? You, you, it, maybe they have a, the work has a special notebook and you just write your notebook about it. Or you open a file on your computer and you just type for 15 minutes. Or you type for seven minutes and you sit there and you go, ah, la, 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 for eight minutes, All right? You just spend, or, or let's make it, let's make it 10 minutes. Let's make it easy, right? 10 minutes a day, sorry, they're, they're coming to get somebody. Um, 10 minutes a day, right? That's all, just 10 minutes a day. You just spend 10 minutes a day with this, this project. That's all. Inch forward. Take one little step, right? Maybe the project's shy. Maybe they're scared. Maybe they don't feel like, well, I don't know. They don't know what they're doing. They don't want to waste your time. I don't know, whatever the reason is, you just inch toward them, right? So you have a project that maybe you spend an hour on a day, but in this project is only you spend 10 minutes on a day, right? You know, okay, go ahead. Unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Yeah, I was trying <laughs> saying yes. Yeah, thank you, Lali. Is, that, is yeah, that helpful? That it's very helpful. Very. Yeah. Because you are changing my way of looking at it. It's another way of looking at it. It's another narrative. Right. Exactly. It's not, yeah, it's not the enemy. No, 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 no. It's definitely not the enemy. It's probably a really deep old friend mm. that you just need to approach gently and with love and care. And you don't expect the answers to come quickly mm. and you're working on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Susan. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. It's so fun because we get to, you know, again, like you said, Milani, we, we changed, we, we reframe the narrative. We change the narrative on things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very, very helpful. Very yes. helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Hooray. How you doing, Lynn? Hey, everyone. I'm so sorry. My internet just cut out. Uh oh. Oh, you fro you're frozen. Are you? Fro look at you. You were. You're in two places. <laughs> you're two. Look at you. You're frozen, and then and then you're on Audrey's internet. I was just asking Lynn how she was. How you doing, Lynn Lipton? Uh oh, I can't hear you because you can't. Can you I unmute yourself? I think I unmuted you, Lynn. How are you doing? I just wonder yeah. how are you doing. That's all. There's right. my voice. <laughs> With the beautiful background. That's so gorgeous. Oh, you know, this lovely woman who is 92, 
uh, made these back, you know, paints and made these backgrounds and mm -hmm. And I was just so moved by some of them. And so I keep on changing my background and putting her pictures up occasionally, you know. I yeah, I love that. Yes, I'm I'm writing every day and and I'm focusing, you know, I I went to this uh, workshop with a woman named Natalie Goldberg. Oh yeah. Oh, she's a great writer. She's wonderful. Yeah. She's just wonderful. And um it was very stimulating. I get stimulated by listening mm -hmm. to other people. It gives me ideas. You know, I'm a little shy about asking, but um, it gave me a focus on, uh, you know, uh, just she constantly talks about writing practice. That is to say, writing every day. And, um, and that has really, really helped me to uh, have a continuity and it turns into a focus, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm ever grateful for her, her uh, workshop, you know, mm -hmm. and of course I love you and I'm ever oh. grateful for you. Oh, you know, my son. Thank you. when is your next, can I ask you a question? When is your mm -hmm. next play going to be done in the fall? Uh... Fall or the spring? No, no. Uh, um, I have three this fall and one in the spring oh. uh, top dog is going to be back on broadway place for the plague year is going to be at joe's pub and sally and tom is going to be in minneapolis wow 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 top dog is going to be on broadway top dog is going to be back on broadway fantastic i know it's good i know 20 years people wow wow <laughs> i know it's gonna be fun. thank you for asking them yeah. yeah it's gonna be fun they're all happening it's like i'm gonna be everywhere all at once but it's gonna be wonderful um uh. Especially with again with this Zoom, I feel like we can we can keep watch me work going as much as uh, possible um, because of Zoom. So we and and the way that the public theater and how round have kept it pulled together, which is a real yeah. gift. That's it's really a real, yeah, a real blessing. Top Dog again. I mean, I saw it originally. It was so awesome. Oh, it was just you. so awesome. It was like thank you. Oh God, you can write anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, two yeah. people in a room. Yeah. It was it yeah. was amazing to yeah. me. Thank you. One of my Thank stimulations. You. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. So Thank so you. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, and mm -hmm. I'm delighted to be having continuity to my writing now. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so I, thank you. I just love you. <laughs> there you go. Right back at you. Well, it looks like we're at six o'clock. It's six. Oh my gosh, it's six o'clock already. <laughs> oh my God. We'll be back next week. We will be back next week. All of the sign up sheets are on the public theater website. Um, so sign up. And we'll see you same time, same place. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Great questions. Thank you. See you next